Greetings, esteemed viewers. Step into the realm of business excellence with us on Elevate Your Business, where we unravel the secrets to success and share the strategies that lead to triumph. I'm your host, Ed Jarecki, and I'm thrilled to have you here today. In this program, our goal is to educate and empower business owners, leaders, and entrepreneurs such as yourself by offering valuable insights and guidance from accomplished individuals who have walked a similar path in the world of business. Our guest today follows this tradition as well. So grab some coffee, sit back, relax, and let's give a warm welcome to our incredible guest speaker, Jay Disberger. Jay is a licensed engineer who graduated debt-free with a BSMS degree in architectural engineering. In 2020, Jay recognized and answered a strong calling to serve as a personal finance coach and started Hope Build Financial Coaching. In addition to one-on-one -on -one coaching, he offers group workshops, team finance classes, and produces a Hope Build Financial podcast. Hope Build is purposed with spreading financial education, truth, and hope. Today's favorite facet of financial coaching is helping struggling marriages survive and good marriages thrive. Jay and Hope Build are here to serve you. As Jay joins us on the show, he'll shed light on what success means to him personally and how his definition has evolved over time, as well as one or two of his top challenges and the associated lessons learned. And finally for today, we'll explore how Jay has leveraged innovation in his business to work through challenges and achieve his goals. So join me in welcoming Jay Disperger as we embark on another incredible episode of Elevate Your Business. And without further ado, welcome to the show, Jay. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Maybe a little tired given that we just had a newborn a couple of weeks ago, but I am honored to be on your show. Well, congratulations on the newborn. I think that's an incredible delight in life. I miss it. My youngest is 19 years old in college, so we do reflect on those times. So my sincere mm. congratulations. Thank you. So as we start our show, could you share a little bit more about yourself and your business? So for me in Hope Field Financial Coaching, I like to think of it as something that originated with, I saw a need and I wanted to fill it. You mentioned in the intro that I have a, a license in engineering. I do architectural engineering, electrical design for hospitals and skyscrapers. In the engineering office, which is back in Utah, I had a number of colleagues as I started my career who were much older than me coming up to me asking, hey, I've got this personal finance question or I've got a money problem. What would you do? I don't know why they singled me out, but there was a clear need for financial literacy for people who I knew in the office, friends and family alike. I saw a need. And I wanted to provide value to them. I wanted to provide value to people. I wanted to help them. So I started Hope Field Financial Coaching with that spirit, almost as a passion project in order to improve their lives through how they manage personal finance. That's really what drives me to continue doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, offering financial workshops that help educate people on topics that may otherwise be uncomfortable, as well as produce my show, the Hope Field Financial Podcast. So what you talked about there, I love that focus on passion. And of course, to me, that is a critical component of success is to be passionate about what you do. What is your definition today of success? My definition of success is less a definition of something that's finite. I don't think of success as a tangible object. I don't think of it as a destination. I don't even think of success as a journey. I think of success as a state of being. I think you can best describe success and the state of being that success is by contrasting it with the opposite. If someone is a failure, they're being crushed by failure that they've experienced. Someone who is successful is someone who has failed significantly more than the individual who has failed. They're out there doing, they're trying, they are putting their best foot forward every day. And instead of being crushed by their failures, they're standing on top of the mountain thereof. They're failing onward and upward. And they're looking at failures as an option to learn and be better and get up and try again. This state of being for success, in my opinion, makes success a decision. It's a choice. We can choose to be a success. We can choose to get up and try again. We can choose to not let fear, false evidence appearing real, steal our future and steal our ability to provide value and hope to our clients. I think that is an absolutely wonderful definition, and I strongly agree with you. Now, 
You've been at it for a few years now. Has your definition evolved as you've continued to travel your journey as an architect and as the owner and CEO of Hope Field Financial? The thing that changed for my definition of success is pretty significant. I used to think of success as being able to execute an effort without error. And the outcome therein would be success. The problem is, is there, it, it's quite possible to do something perfectly. It's quite possibly to execute on a plan without error and still fail. That's just life. I think that's actually real close to next generation Star Trek quote from Jean-Luc Picard. So I had to change my definition of success because to look at a situation and an outcome and say, there was no error, I succeeded, is to have an outlook that makes failure very easy to crush you in order to provide the best help that I can to clients, be the best version of myself, my definition of success had to evolve to something that was more realistic and something that was more hope-filled. Well, I congratulate you on that because not many actually get to achieve that level of understanding, that level of self-actualization. And I agree with those sentiments. And through that journey, my guess is you had a challenge or two. Could you share what one or two of those key challenges are and the associated lessons learned? Absolutely. One of them that I'm recently working on is, I mentioned I started my engineering career in Utah. I also started Hope Field Financial Coaching in Utah. I had a good community that I was involved with in Utah, actually a number of communities. This made it easier to start my coaching practice there. When I moved my family to Missouri to be closer to family members, mainly on my wife's side, I moved to a place where I had no built-in community. I had no built-in connections. It's very challenging to start to regrow something that I had fairly well established in Utah from the ground up all over again. I had a plan to get some of the workshops that I had written out into the communities here and target because my passion is to help marriages primarily. I thought churches would be a great place to host marriage-themed workshops around personal finance. But the gatekeepers that I tried to talk to are very good at gatekeeping. And that sort of approach, that strategy was not very viable in the long run. The tactic that I've used to sort of overcome this particular challenge is to keep an open mind with the flexibility to the plan that I had, recognize the failures that I had experienced, learn from them, and push forward through success. I had a magazine that popped into my mailbox as I was trying to reach out to churches and offer my workshop to their communities. This magazine was for the local school district. They basically offer throughout the summer and actually throughout the year, varying adult focused classes that people can sign up for and develop professionally and personally in various facets of life. One of the categories they had in there was personal finance. A few emails, phone calls, and an interview later, I now have multiple workshops scheduled with the school district here, and I'm able to reach the local community in a way that wasn't otherwise going to be possible, thus failing, overcoming those failures, learning from them, and finding success and growing into the community, overcoming that challenge. Adapt and keep moving forward, right? Amen. And so through this journey, too, you've Innovation is a part of everybody today. And it's not just about technology. It's people, process, technology, and of course, the environment, the culture that envelops that. So when you look at your innovation, how are you leveraging innovation in order to drive your business and your career forward? With that challenge that I overcame in in relocating, another tactic that I tried to leverage was starting the podcast that I have, the Hope Field Financial Podcast. We have an episode every Tuesday. I started it just a little over a year ago. It was the first Tuesday of 2023, and we launched the podcast. I think that it is absolutely awesome that almost any small business owner with minimal overhead can get into podcasting and sharing content out there, showing the value that they have, the passion that they have to a massive audience that could not be reached by means without the technology at our disposal today. It's incredible. I made a phone call to Dave Ramsey to expand on a topic when it comes to retirement on my podcast. And that call to Dave, which was made on the 2nd of November, 2023, ended up going viral on social media. So I've also been able to leverage 
social media platforms in addition to the podcast in order to grow my audience, grow my reach, grow my ministry way faster and more effectively than could otherwise be possible. One other bit of technology that I've been leveraging in order to save me time and do a better job with my coaching practice is using generative AI to replace what otherwise would be hours of Photoshop work when it comes to promotional materials, thumbnails, and graphics that are used in my business. It might not get me all the way there, just asking for a particular image to be made through a form of generative AI, but it it gets me a much better start than I could from the ground up. Absolutely. And for our viewers out there, one of the messages that keeps coming up over and over that I'll re-emphasize is if you're not using some of these basic AI tools and capabilities out there, start. Even if mm -hmm. it's a simple chatbot, there's chatbot threes out there that are very simple, very low cost. Start asking questions. The chatbot fours have much more capability. You leverage one of those and just start by asking questions. It is amazing on how you learn and how you grow. I've been in technology for years and this AI revolution that's happened over this last 18 months has been absolutely incredible. And I couldn't do what I do without it. Yeah, just in the last couple of months, what I've been doing is taking descriptions that I type up and I would normally just post them as they are or little advertisements and I'd take them and say, yeah, it's good enough. Now I can take it to an AI and say, is this the best that I can do for marketable verbiage or SEO words? And it can spit back something that has the same purpose, but is honed in to be more effective. Absolutely. Use it all the time. Absolutely agree. So when you look at where we're at today, as we project into the future, any thoughts as to where your use of technology is going? Well, I think I'm going to be continuing to develop and improve what I produce on my podcast show through acquiring better technology and leveraging the ever faster developing AI tools that are out there so that I can make something that provides more entertaining value than is otherwise possible. I think that's excellent. And I know there's a whole lot of tools coming out. So this will be an interesting journey for all of us, because in some cases, we don't know what we don't know. And who mm -hmm. knows what the next big idea is going to be out there. So that really means staying open minded and continue to adapt like we were talking about earlier. I'll, I'll give you just one quick thing with the AI stuff. There's also a, a word of caution that comes along with it. I did one episode on personal security, password management, if you will because the development of AI has made password cracking much easier for uh, bad actors. And there have been studies that have been completed in the last year to say, well, how long does your password actually need to be? And it's, it's much longer than anything that I had had out there. So there's a lot that we need to learn and keep up with, with these technologies in order to be the best business owners that we can be. And I think that's a big challenge for these, especially these larger organizations that produce all this capability for us is finding not only a way to make us more secure, but to reduce the amount of maintenance overhead required of us to manage it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a very interesting journey. And I kind of see us in the place of it really developing. It's not where it needs to be yet. There's so much opportunity for improvement. Agreed. So if you were to offer our audience one takeaway that they must consider as part of their entrepreneurial, their business journey, what would that be? This question is the one that I had to reflect on the most in preparing for this, this podcast. And I'd have to say that the entrepreneurs that I know, those who are closest to me are risk takers. I, I would identify myself as a risk taker. And when we're not as afraid of risk, it can be maybe too easy to take on too much risk or expose ourselves to undue risk that isn't necessary. In the personal financial coaching that I do, I teach a topic called hope-filled frugality. I define hope-filled frugality as the intentional practice of prudent economy. And I believe that this virtue for personal finance can be extended to business and it can help us gauge whether or not we're taking on enough risk or too much risk. I think we need to be intentional in seeing a need and filling it. We need to have a plan that we believe in, that we reflect on, and that we act on. And we need to put it into practice in a way that's actually going to lead to 
action that's going to lead to failures that we can learn from so we can be successes. We need to take the intentional practice of prudent. And when, when, when I say prudence, I mean not exposing us to undue risk. And that's balanced with efficiency. That's balanced with economy. I typically, if I'm trying to figure out if something's efficient or economical, I use the 80-20 rule. I'm sure you're familiar with it. And Absolutely. many of the listeners, many of the listeners out there are too. So I balance prudence, not exposing myself to undue risk with economy within the envelope of frugality. And I'd say if you have a question on your entrepreneurial journey or your personal financial journey for that matter, I like to use frugality as a litmus test for those decisions and help me think of solutions that I wouldn't have otherwise considered. What a fair way to summarize that is it's well-informed calculated risk. I think that would be a good way to say it. I, I, when, when you're talking about taking on risk, you want to understand what it is. If it is calculated and determined to be undue or risk that you can't take on, then it's one that should be avoided, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe I'm a little conservative in that regard, but it's, it's helped me not take on risk that exceeded what I, I should expose myself to in my family at least in the personal financial journey. And the way that I've started Hope Filled, I've, I didn't jump in two feet first and leave the licensed engineering career. I've sort of eased into it. I've taken slower steps that are maybe a little more painful, giving myself the opportunity to have smaller failures so that as I build up to bigger actions that are more calculated, uh, they can be more likely to lead to a successful state of being. Any final thoughts? I think I've covered everything that I came to to mention, and I just can't thank you enough for inviting me on to your podcast. This has been a joy. Thank you. You are very welcome. It is my honor and my absolute pleasure to have you on board. I thought your messages are outstanding, and our listeners really need to take heed on those messages that you've helped us clarify today. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today, and a special thank you to our incredible guest, Jay Disberger, for sharing his insights, experiences, and business success tactics with us. We hope that this conversation has left you inspired and motivated to embrace the challenges of entrepreneurship with resilience, innovation, and adaptability. Remember, success comes in many forms, and it is essential to define it for yourself. Take the lessons shared by Jay to heart as you navigate your own entrepreneurial journey. Embrace change seek out opportunities for growth, and always be willing to adapt to the ever-evolving landscape of business. Thank you once again to our phenomenal guest speaker, Jay Disberger, and thank you all for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next time as we continue exploring the stories behind exceptional entrepreneurs. Stay resilient and stay innovative, everyone. Have a great day.